All right, three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Gamal, Gimel, whatever the heck you want to call me. Welcome back to the next episode of Factions here on my channel. This is going to be awesome. We're going to enjoy all this stuff. It's going to be super, super cool. So today, I got some fun stuff planned. Um, actually, I don't have anything planned, if I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to go from here and see what's going on. Um, but I actually figured out what we're going to do for this episode. Is This is going to be how to get started on Factions and how to play um, and what to do on our server, especially Fade Away here, and how to get started and how to get going very well. Um, it's especially important. So, first thing you do when you spawn in, oh, I'm lagging here. First thing that's going to happen when you spawn, when you join the server, you're going to spawn in right here and you're going to see some stuff. First thing I want you to do is look at these holograms. These holograms are important. It gives you everything you need world information, overworld, 10k, 10k, nether, and all that stuff. Website, forums, um, team speak. We will be probably changing our team speak IP soon, so make sure to stay updated for that. Um, and then you can also see the envoy when the next envoy is dropping and all the players online. Make sure to do that because it is good as a staff member. I know it does get annoying um, when you guys are asking all the time what the overworld is, what the nether is, what the end is, what the forums are. Make sure to see that, um, then you'll know all that stuff. Make sure too, as I can see right here, every once in a while, Fade Away will give a little update here. TNT will be disabled for seven days to start of the map. It will restart Saturday for us. So um, every once in a while, read, make sure to read those, you know what to do. So second thing you want to do, um, what I would do at least, is um, I would go ahead and do slash kit. So usually when you join, you'll get slash kit member. So as you can see, I got kit member here. And it gives you all the normal stuff. So you get all this diamond gear, you get all your stuff. Now, first thing I would do is I would go to Warp Shop. Warp Shop, once you get to Warp Shop, it'll take you to the spot where you can go and you can see. Now, if you don't want to go to Warp Shop, I don't know if it's entirely good. But you can slash sell hand these if you wanted. But if you wanted to sell those hand to get some money, that is what you can do. But what I would do is I would instead type slash wild. See, start executing slash wild in five seconds. So what I would do, once you've gotten to this wild, this is kind of how you get started. So now you've gotten slash wild, as you can see, F map. Um, we're in Kamor, somewhere in the wilderness, and I would make sure to run. Just run. Okay, so you're running. You find uh, whatever way is going. So I'm going south here. So you just kind of get away from spawn. So you want to get away from zero, zero, and zero. That's where spawn is. So you're just going to run as far as you can, wherever you want. I'm going to jump into speed 10 here. Um, that way we can get a little bit distance from here. Whoop, okay, speed 10, there we go. So we get speed 10, we're going a little farther. Um, we're running, we're running through here, um, and you get to a spot. All right, we're gonna just go and call it here right now. So make sure to get as far away as possible because um, it, it it just makes your base a little bit better. Try and go as far as long as you can. Um, it just, it, again, it, it's so much easier and you have less chance of getting raided. So first thing I would do is not make a sky ball. If you wanna make a sky ball, I would go if you want. But people can fly and fashion territory. So if they do happen to see your stuff um, on their mini map, because mini maps are allowed as long as they're not showing items and players, by the way. So if they see something on the mini map, they can just claim and then fly up and then be there right there. So what I would do is usually it depends on how you want to go for this. But once you found your base, you set up a little base. Now, the best base I would do is a cannon base um, because it's just the best way to go. So first thing you do is to set up. So since we're in the desert, let's move to somewhere right here where this grass. So as you can see, when you start off, you get all these different items and crops. I, I know I said sell them, but my recommendation would be not to sell them because what these crops give you is the seeds and the seeds are start to a farm, right? So you got your farm going up and um, eventually you're gonna wanna get going. Oops, I do not wanna get, grab all these blocks. So. What do you start off? Well, what are you going to do? Well, you have all this stuff, and you're going to want to get going. So let me just hop into GM Survival here. And now we're in the game of Survival, right? So now we got all our stuff. So how to make a faction base? Pretty freaking easy to do. Um, oh, oh, I didn't mean to drop my seeds there. Um, pretty freaking easy. All right, so first thing I would do is I would go um, down. Find a little spot underground, um, and make sure you cover up your hole so it doesn't look like, you know, it's obvious. Don't make it obvious that you've been here um, so you're gonna go down go down to about bedrock it's probably best to go down to bedrock because now when you're at bedrock and if somebody finds your base usually it's gonna be x-ray user joined x-ray is when people find you oh somebody just joined one sec I gotta join a user channel. left your channel <laughs> somebody just joined our channel that's all right so anyways so once we've gotten gone to the bedrock you're gonna go all the way down make sure you cover up your hole behind you it doesn't really matter if it's cobblestone or whatnot just make sure that you get to the bottom of the world bedrock is best bedrock is where you want to go so because now if somebody, oops, don't want to go too far if somebody falls and finds your base usually it's going to be x-ray because who's going to find your base like this huh if it's not claimed they're not going to find your base unless they have like entity mode on and that's really difficult when you don't have money entities down here so you've got your base down here you've covered up behind you and you're just going to do a little bit of a base so i'm going to do uh let's just 
bed, make out a little area. So you get a little base going right, you get a little clear, clear area cleared out, you mine some ores, get all that iron stuff that you need, and make sure everything's good. So you got your base, right? So now that you've got your base, set up a farm. So you're gonna, let's just clear out a little bit more of this. I would use uh, world edit, it's being a little bit laggy right now. So you got your little base set up, right? So you got a little bit of a... Uh, going so now you want to make a farm right a farm is the best thing to do farms usually is the best way to start off so you got a little bit of a farm going you get your grass down here you get all that stuff you need you're going to want to go um, and do that so what the best thing to do is to get money is to go mining too as well so since we're broke right now because as you can see well right now my balance is 2474k but you start out with 500 dollars. so right so as of assuming right now you have 500 dollars. so you see this coal mine that you see iron mine that you see things that you could use mine those because you can sell all of those i think you can sell cobblestone too for some money in the shop anything that you can get money is good so once you've gotten some money let's say you've gone mining a little bit you've got your base set up you got a little bit started now that you've gone you're going to go ahead and go to the shop so for instance just as a guess we're going to the shop right now right you got into the shop water bucket right water bucket is important to all farms so you just do a little water bucket and that you know just one area is pretty good for this general area and now you start your farm so oh but wait you can't start your farm because you don't have a hoe so make a hoe it's pretty easy to make a hoe everybody knows how to make hoes and all that stuff um let's see if i can find one here we go so we got a hoe you made your hoe you've done all that stuff you got a little bit of cash going and now this is where your cash inflow is going to come so you're going to start you're going to start hoeing this lane you're going to make it and you're going to put crops down so, right so you're going to put all your seeds down and you're going to start your farming right this is what you're going to do and you want to do all different it's up to you what kind of crops you want to use because there's uh it gives you a whole bunch of different ones it's up to you the best one probably would be uh sugar cane it would be my say a sugar cane because it's easiest to do um, and then cactus because cactus can be good as well. So make sure you get all those going and you got your farm set up. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and wait. So now you've waited, you got your farm set up, and you just gotta wait around and hopefully um, get some things going, right? So now you're waiting around, AFK in here, doing whatever, mining around, is waiting for these crops to grow. So when these crops grow, so let's get some bone meal out here. So we get a uh, bone meal. Um, so we get bone meal out, and you've got all your bone meal. And these all grow. Let's just say it all grows here, right? So all our crops are growing. They're growing, they're growing, growing, and they've grown and grown. And oh, I forgot. Sorry, this is also, I did not realize that that was uh, pumpkin. Is this pumpkin? I think this is pumpkin, actually. All right, so let me fix this. So these pumpkins, you might make sure to have grass block by inside. So good thing right there, I found th this out. If a pumpkin have to have a grass block right beside them, don't till the land right by pumpkins because that's where they grow. So to make sure not to do that. So you've, you you got your pumpkins going, um, whatever these are, watermelon, pumpkins, something of the sorts. Wait for them to grow, and eventually they will spawn in a uh, pumpkin or watermelon or whatever it is that they are, and eventually they'll pop. And so then you break that pumpkin and put it in your inventory and wait. So then say. Um, it's been, you know, a little bit of time, it's gone a while, and you get a pumpkin. So say you get a stack of pumpkins, right? So I don't know if this works on all items. Most items it should work for, but you can do slash sell hand, right? Once you got your pumpkins, pumpkins, it'll sell your pumpkins. You can see $305 out of your account. See, that's, money is the economy right now. You want to use money, money gets you things you need. So as you get more money and as you get better in your farms, you want to increase your farm size, right? So you get farmer, you get better, you can make your farm bigger, you do all that stuff, and your farm becomes this fun land right so you get all your stuff and um all that stuff and make sure because before you tp out of here you don't want to do that because um you're going to lose your home for instance so this is where your home is right your faction base so what you want to do is do the command slash set home and then make it the home name whatever you want to name it farm um whatever you want to name your home name that's what you would do set home's home name so if i did set home farm here right and then i happen to go to spawn and i just tp out and i'm going to workshop do a thing later say i want to go back to my home i just do slash home and then farm, right? Because that's the name of the home. And look, it's right here. Deep Me's back, perfect, all that stuff. So that's really what the homes are used for is to just hit your homes. And as you get better, make your bank, make the mine bigger, make your place bigger, get better homes, you do all that stuff and it looks nice and it feels nice and you get better. So later down the road, let's just say, um, let's just say later down the road, you get all your stuff and you've been going good, right? So you've got a bigger farm, you got money and you can buy obsidian. All right, so you gone ahead and bought yourself some obsidian. Cobblestone works too, but the best is obsidian because it's uh, higher durability. So now that you've got your obsidian, you want to make a faction base. So first thing you want to do is do F create and then your faction name. So I'm going to name um, this faction test, T-S-T, I guess. I didn't spell test very well, right? So then you're going to want to do F claim because this is your area. So remember, you want to be far out. This is after your farm's done, you got a little bit of money. So say you got 200K or so. It's, it really is up to you how much, when you want to start making a base. This base that I'm showing you right now is you 
usually what you want to do when you start getting better and you have some money and you want to protect your stuff a little bit better than having a base down there that somebody could just mine to, for instance. So, what you're going to do is you're going to claim an area. So, F claim, and then the that's the thing. F claim for your faction, test, for instance. F claim, and then you do S, which would be square, or C for circle. So, it depends on how big the claims are. Or you can do 1. F claim 1, and oops, F claim um, 1. Ah, uh, shoot, I don't even know all the commands. F claim, um, I thought it was one. F claim one. F, who, wait, who am I in my faction? Am I not in wilderness right now? All right, we're not. F create, sorry, didn't I do F claim? I might have done that. So F creates, um, TST, right? There's our faction. Now our faction's in test, right? F claim one. There you go. So F claim one, as you can see now, it's one map. So we're by the faction gang here. But as you can see, map, we're F claim map, right? That's where we are. So say we want to F, we want to get rid of that, right? We don't F claim one. So we get rid of that. We don't want that. We want to have a little bit bigger of claim. So F claim S for square for S, F claim S two. Say we have nine chunks now. F map, you can see there's nine different chunks there. So if I want to F claim S two again, it gets rid of nine chunks. So that there's the, like the square, but now see F claim S or F claim C two. It's a, uh, oop, not SC, F claim C2. Now you can see it's five chunks because it's a circle. See, it makes sense, right? So it's easier to figure out once you get going, but S is for square, um, C is for circle. So we're just gonna say C for circle here, right? So now this faction land is claimed. So this means nobody else can build but you and your faction members. So as you can see, it's just me and my factions, but if I wanted to invite someone to my faction to get more power, because more people in your faction equals more power, which equals more claiming land, because the more people you have in your faction, the more land you can claim. So if you wanted to invite someone, it says F-I-A, and then the player name. So once they join, um, you get someone to join, and if that stands for, by the way, F, invite, add, and then their player name. So that's what it means, and once you've got that, you get more power and you can claim more land. But let's just say you got your base going, right? So um, you got a little bit of a base set up, and you want to make as big as a box as you want of Abi. Now, my suggestion would be to go all the way to Sky Limit with this. So, pillar up and go to Sky Limit because that means they have to sand stack. The person who's going to try and raid your base, they would have to sand stack from all the way to the Sky Limit. So, that means more sand, more power, more big of a cannon, harder to raid, right? So, you the better the better way to have an unraidable base is to make it up to Sky Limit. But for now, we're just going to do that. So, um, I can't use World Edit right now, but let's just say, for instance, this is your little base, right? So, but just pretend that everything is filled in with Abby. Everything is perfect. We got a room. We got all that stuff. Let me just set up a little general box, right? Probably should set a roof on this if I'm going to demonstrate how to water your stuff. Um, so yeah, so you got your little base. This is scaled down. So you can make this as big as you want as long as really it's in your claims. So just make sure not to build outside your claims or else people can edit it. So once you're inside your claims, you got your little base set up here, right? You got a little bit of a base going and we're going to set, we're going to set a new home. So now because you have two homes because you're a member, so you set home base. So now, this is scale. We're gonna just pretend we're the size of a, like, we're gonna just pretend we're the size of a little pot here, right? This is us, right here, right? You got your you got your farm here, maybe you got a grinder over here. This is all scaled down, so usually this would be a lot bigger, because this, as a base, is a little small, but it would take a lot easier to make. So, let's just pretend this is your base, right? So you got your base going, it's all hollowed out. Make sure not to have open like this, because then um, people could just enter pearl in. So if you want, let's just fix this. All right, so your base is entirely sealed up, right? Only you have a home in there, nobody can build in there, because it's claimed by your faction and all that stuff. So, once it's claimed, you want to go ahead and water this. Why would you want to water it? Well, because water is what prevents TNT from exploding, right? So you want to water this. Um, you just want to water it. Go diagonal across your roof because water, then it makes it all. You just go diagonal. It does that whole thing, right? So on our fact, on our server, we have sponges, and that'll help with the water. So if you just place a sponge here and a sponge there, just make sure it's all, like, generally good. You want to make sure all this is in the faction lane. Now, there's better ways to do this than what I'm using right now because this is um, kind of just thrown together. But as long as it's not too drainy, too bad, it looks good, um, it, it works out. It doesn't really matter as long as you have it watered and you don't really care about that. Now, there is ways to make it a little bit better, and I will get to that in a second. But as you can see, on this corner, there's no water here, right? So you would think that doesn't matter, but it actually does. And some of these sponges are actually screwing up. So I'm going to get rid of some of these sponges and redo the water there, actually, because it seems to be being a User little User joined your channel. But, oh, somebody else just joined our channel. So um, once you have watered your top of your base, you want to go ahead and fix the water on the corners, right? So the corners here, they seem to be watered all right, but they're actually not watered correct because... Technically, if a TNT blew up right here, not the entirety of this block is actually not water protected. So since it's not completely water protected, you have to add water here. Well, it's really, really easy to do. Honestly, uh, most people don't even realize this. So 
since there's no water block here, you want to get water here. So instead of just placing a water source here, what you got to do, place a block right there, right? Place a block there, and it will make the water flow down right here, and you're good. And it may look a little messy, but it's, it doesn't matter how pretty it looks really right now if you're starting off. There is techniques to do this once you get bigger bases, and once you get bigger all and all that stuff, you want to make sure that it looks nice. But since you've got that, you want to do that in all four corners now, because four corners, you know, all four corners, you want to be water protected. And that you've got them all protected. See, now your base is completely almost completely unraidable but as you can see underneath here it's tnt right there's no water so you want to make sure there's water under on the underside of your base now however you want to do that is up to you but what i would suggest doing is just making a little bit of a layer underneath now this is also for reverse cannons so when there's better cannoners on the server this prevents from reversing your cannon right so the reverse cannon is pretty much where well, the cannon goes upside down and completely does it opposite of what cannon's supposed to be doing. I don't know how so I don't know how this works, but this is how you protect it. So you add a little bit of a layer underneath your base, right? So now you've got a little bit of a, just a floor. And make sure it's one block wide. So now you got that. But see, there's a water, or there's an air layer in there. So make sure to do the same thing you do with the roof. Put the water in the corners and diagonal section. Make sure it's all water, watered under there. And now you've got it all watered underneath your base. You want to make sure everything's all perfect. And now they can't reverse under there. Your base is completely watered on all all sides of your base right so everything is watered everything looks nice everything is completely fixed no way they're gonna get in um, unless they glitch and then if they glitch then come to the staff member and we'll get them banned and whatever because glitching is not allowed obviously so now you've got that that's the simple way to do it that is the easiest way to make a little base this is kind of the general thing now somebody could come along and make a cannon now it's, they'd have to make a cannon if they want to get in but see it's only you have to get through obby so if you're wanting to do it a little bit better what you do is there's a way to gen walls now once this gets bigger, I'm going to come over here and show you how to gen some walls. So it's pretty easy to gen walls. It's not the hardest thing to do. It just is time consuming. Um, but what's pretty much is going to happen is when you're at the bottom, you want to have a little bit of sponge. Now sponge, um, it goes every four blocks, I believe. So one, two, three, four, and then you want to add a sponge every four blocks. And that's where it is. Now on our server and most faction servers, I would say, if you watch, when I come up here, we have sponge edited. So sponge does not... Um, because most of the time, sponge will only suck up the water, and then the water will fall, and then it won't suck it up again. But for us, we have it where it completely stops the water from flowing. So watch, the water's flowing down, and the sponge here, it stops the water from flowing down. It just makes genning easier. So make sure whenever you're going to gen some walls, let's count here, one, two, three, four. Make sure whenever you gen walls, you have some sponge um, on the lower side. It just makes everything easier, cleaner, nicer looking, and it just it just makes it easier in general. That's that's what it is. So once you've gotten this, you're going to go slash up one. Oh, nope, we can't do that right now. This pump term is going on. But once you get your little up area, so you got your area, and you got, this is just for one wall as a suggestion here. So um, however you want to do this, you would usually do this um, around your base. But once you've gotten around, you want to make this go out, and you're going to come over here, and this is about the farthest you want to go. Go. so you got that right and then you're going to mow you need three three um lines right three lines for two walls so three lines equals two walls right because there's going to be walls in the middle so think of the walls as the air blocks here so one wall here and then one wall here right because that's where the thing is going to flow so you've got that and all you need now is water lava and a pickaxe and some time that's all you need so you're gonna hold go ahead and what the first thing you do is lava the middle wall make sure it always alternates with water lava water lava right so water lava water lava and so forth on as you want to go so and for example we would be starting here as a wall and the wall would go all the way around this base and you can as many walls as you want and that's why you want to start sky limit because when you get a sky limit they have to stack all the way and then the lava can go all the way down you want so you got your lava flow down here right so now what's it going to happen so what's going to happen is when the water flows it's going to make these blocks and gen so when water and lava hit they mix cobblestones or obby but right now we're going to make it into water because or to cobblestone excuse me with the water so as you can see though this middle block is air so how do we get rid of that to make it completely lava because we want three blocks wide of lava so one here and then two here so we want this third one the middle one to be lava so easiest to do is what you do and when you're in survival you come here i would usually recommend putting on a fire risk potion to make sure you don't miss any blocks and you break all the obby blocks that the source blocks are on top of. So we break these blocks, right? So we're inside the lava and we break each block. And I wouldn't recommend using obby like I am. I would use netherrack or something like that. So your pickaxe can break it faster and make it easier. And then because you're getting rid of these, these are essentially just the uh, frame for the whole thing. So now you've written it and you wait for all this lava in the middle to drain down. So as you can see, it's drained down and it's three blocks wide. Oh, there we go. It's three blocks wide. And now we want to add the water, right? So the water, and actually we need to make sure that we do this correct. So make sure the water has access to 
um, not flow the wrong way, right? Because we don't want them to float the wrong way. So we're going to make a little bit of a uh, barrier here so the water can only flow in one direction, and that is toward the lava, right? So we're going to make sure that there's... Um, and this is usually you had to only do this on the first wall or the second or the last wall, things like that. It usually doesn't take too long. You just got to make sure the water flows one direction so it doesn't... Um, so it doesn't mess up, right? So now you got this, and the water, the lava's flow down completely to the bottom of the world, or however far you want it to go down, where the sponge is stopping it. Now, you add some water. So you just add water there, you add a couple blocks, two blocks easily, because it flows all the way down here, so just add two blocks or so, every once in a while. And see, now the lava is flowing correctly. So now this block won't gen here, as you can see, because we need to get rid of this corner block, because we don't actually want that flowing right there. So as you can see, these are what the walls will now look like, right? So now, since the water has started, we just got to let it flow a little bit, or let it sit. And now what you got to do is break these blocks. So as you break each block, the water is going to flow down, right? So as the water flows down, it's genning the lava. Oh, I seem to be glitching a little bit. Um, let's fix that. All right, here we go. So now it's going to be flowing down. As you can see, it's genning the lava and turning it into cobblestone. So you're breaking these because each one is just a source water block flowing down. And now we're making walls, right? So this is walls, and you can do this for, uh, you know, 200 blocks up, and that's how far it'll go. So once you got all that done, drained, all the waters flowed down, everything's genned. As you can see, these corner blocks won't gen, like I said, because there's no water flowing out here to gen them. So now everything's genned, everything's all cleaned up. You want to get rid of your source blocks. So you're going to want to get rid of all the lava. If you want to save that lava and move it on for another block, that's fine. You can get your buckets going on, but I just prefer just to break the blocks and break these source blocks of water. Get rid of all the water, make sure it's all drained and gone. And once it's all gone, you want to get rid of your frame. So this obsidian here, you want to get rid of the frame and do that on both sides, all sides, every single wall. You're going to want to do this. Get rid of each little source block and you're going to want to move on from there. So now we've gotten our source blocks gotten rid of, right? And so now we can come down here and look at our walls. Look at this. Two perfectly gen walls, perfect like that. They go around your base. Well, now you want to water these because just like the obsidian here, it's going to be able to blown up with TNT, right? Because TNT can blow things up if it's not watered. Water on top of it makes it so it can't blow up. So what you do is do the exact same thing. Put water blocks on top of this. Um, what actually, it went, let me try something here. Let me get rid of that. Um, an easier way instead of just putting a block of water on each little block here. Um, that's the way you want if you want to make absolutely sure. But the easiest way to do it for me is you come back later now and you make a little bit of a, like the same thing with the roof here. And you just make a diagonal, little diagonal turn here. You go across your roof. You make everything all watered up along the corners and you fix the corners and then you're good, right? But the same thing with these corners on the last walls because this is only for the last walls and you want to actually make sure here because as you can see, since there's these um, frame here, there's no water here. So you want to break them, make sure to break the frame in the middle again and all the water will flow down. And all now all these water uh, walls are watered, but not exactly. Remember with the roof, you got to put a block here. So you put the block there, it'll flow. It doesn't really matter right now. If you want to make it look clean and nice, then there's an easier way to do it. Um, but it's, it's easier just to do this. Make sure it's watered. Make sure those corners are watered perfectly fine. And now everything's watered, right? So your corners are watered. Your wall is perfect. Now, it's this doesn't matter. Remember, you don't have to do the bottom of these on walls specifically. You don't have to worry about that because they can't reverse those. There's no point in reversing walls, right? So once they've now person and you do this all around the side of your base so this practically will look like over here this will go on the outside of your base and that's what it will look like and this can go for as long as your claims go so don't do it in the wilderness make sure it's all in your claims but once it's in your claims that's how you make a base that's how you add walls that's how you add more protection right because this is the last resort right but when you have walls they now the person who wants to raid your base has to get through these walls so they can in this wall right they get through this wall with a cannon right oh boom we got through it but now there's another wall behind that right so we got a cannon through that wall shoot another time oh another wall another wall wall another wall until they get to the base so say they've come through all these walls they have to get through those walls in order to get to your base so once they get through those walls and they get to your base then your base is kind of raided and they can get inside and raid all of it but that's what the walls are it's for extra protection extra things so starting out you can just do a farm and then move on to a little base and then big base and as you can see it gets pretty freaking big now i can't really show off any big bases right now but the bases get really big and really awesome and make sure to always 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 like i said do the under layer here you can even add multiple layers of this so to stops reverse cannons and things like that those are usually what people get rated by is reverse cannons um, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it did. You did enjoy. That's how to start factions. Um, farms are the best way. The best next thing to do would be spawners and mine for experience and use all that stuff like skeleton spawners, zombie spawners, blaze spawners. Um, and then you go from there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you did enjoy and subscribe, all that stuff, yada, yada, yada. You get the drill. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Factions question mark on our channel. Thank you guys. And I'll see you guys all later. Goodbye.